In this video, we're going to do some program development under Altair DOS. We're going to use Altair's assembler and linker to demonstrate how to put together an assembly language program and execute it. And we're going to use Microsoft's Fortran compiler and linker to demonstrate how a high-level language was used on the Altair. All right, so let's go ahead and get this computer fired up. Do a reset. We're going to boot using the bootloader ROM, which is up at 177400. We'll examine that location. Set the first four bits to indicate we're using a 2SIO board. And boot. All right, that's all done, it looks like. Take a look at our computer. All right, and we've got our memory size prompt up. We'll let uh, Altair DOS size it. We're going to say yes to interrupts so that we have control and can abort programs. The highest disk number we're using, just one disk, so the highest disk number is zero. How many disk files? We'll just say four sequential and four random just to have a... Uh, a safe number of files we can open. Alright, before we can do anything, we have to mount disk drive zero. So we'll do that and let it churn away and, and uh, see what's going on. Alright, and let's take a look at what we've got. Oh, files is, is basic. I've got basic on the mind. Directory command does a listing of the files. All right, what we're going to do first is edit an assembly language program, and we've got a sample one out here that we looked at in the last video called Echo. So I'm going to type edit, and then the file name, and then the disk drive number. And again, since it's a source file name, it's going to find edit that has a leading and sign on it. Where is that? I'm glad it knows where it is. There it is right there. All right, so that's actually the file it opened, is the and sign Echo. P will display the current contents of the file. So what this file does is it basically echoes anything that comes in through uh, the SIO board that's at addresses 6 and 7. So it pulls the status register waiting for something. As soon as it comes in, it reads it, writes it back out. Uh, if it's a character turn, it gives us a line feed just to make things easier to see. And then it stays in that loop forever. There's no way to exit this program other than to use the interruptibility that's provided in Altair DOS where Control-C actually interrupts this program and gives control back to Altair DOS. All right, so we're not going to make any changes, so I'll just quit. To assemble a program that you've written, you type ASM. And again, why does ASM work? ASM is a file that has a leading pound sign. And let's see, where is it? There it is right there. So because it's not a built-in command, it goes to drive zero, looks for the file name that you specified with the leading pound sign. If it finds it, it runs it. All right, enter the file name. The file name is echo, and again, source file name without the leading and sign, and drive zero. All right, it's already done. Zero errors in assembly, asking you if you want to assemble another. And the reason this question comes up is because you might be assembling something that consisted of four or five source files that were then all linked together um, once you had those all compiled or assembled into object code. So we'll say no, there's not another one. So that's basically it for the assembler. At this point, what it created was a relocatable object file that was also called echo with a leading asterisk. Um, boy, it would be nice to have sorted directories, wouldn't it? There it is right there. So that's the relocatable object file that it made. All right, so now we can run the linker. And to load a file into the linker, you type load and give it the file name. Again, it's going to go out and look for asterisk echo. And I forgot a drive number, so it's always going to prompt. You can specify a load address here. If you don't specify one, it uses the default load address, which was, is 24,000 octal. That leaves Altair DOS um, monitor in memory, and then uh, the code executes at 24,000 octal and above. All right, so it's in memory. We can run it. We can just type X to execute it, and now the program is running. All right, what it does is it echoes everything we type. So let's take a look over here on this terminal and see if it's working. Whoops, <laughs> wrong keyboard. All right, so we can see this is working. All right, so we've got that working. Now to get control back here at the monitor, we have to do control C, which uses the interrupt actually interrupts that program that was running and gives us control back here. All right. Now, 
as you noticed, we're out of the linker. We have not created an executable file. All that did was load it into memory. How would you how would you create an executable file? Well, you start the linker, and you say load the program name. So it's loaded the relocatable object file into an absolute uh, memory image at 24,000, and now we just exit. That program is sitting in memory. I still don't have it on a file. How do you write it to a file? Well, this is sort of like you do in CPM. The save command is an intrinsic command built right into Altair DOS, so this does not have to load into memory, so it won't clobber what you've already got there. And you give it a file name. We're going to call the executable echo. And guess what? the save program or in command is going to do, it's going to put a pound sign in front of echo because it's going to be an executable. So save echo to drive zero. It's asking you what is the lowest address of the program. Well it's 24,000 because that's the default load address in the linker. That's where it is in memory. And I don't remember how big it was but it was very short so let's just do um, 100 octal bytes. That'll be more than enough and it's wanting to know what address the program starts. This particular program started at 24,000 octal. Alright, so it just wrote it from memory into a file for us. Got basic on my mind still. Alright, so the program echo with a leading pound sign is what we just created. So now we can run the program just by typing echo. If we look over here, we can see that what we type comes in on the screen. All right, now to get control back over here, we're gonna have to use control C. And again, if you didn't have interrupts enabled, you could really never get control back, you'd have to reset the machine. All right, so that's the assembler and linker. Uh, links into memory, you can run it from memory. Uh, the only way to actually create a file is to exit the linker, save whatever's in memory out to a file using the save command. All right, let's take a look at a Fortran program. Um, Microsoft's Fortran compiler F80 and Linker L80 were available for a few machines. They also made it work here on Altair DOS. So we'll take a look at our program we've got out here. We've got a program called Prime, which is basically a very closely translated version of that Prime Numbers program we've seen in the basic demonstrations straight into Fortran. So it may not be the best Fortran code, but what we're trying to do is duplicate the exact flow of the code and variables, etc., that was used in the basic one, so we can compare Fortran's performance to basic. All right, so there's the program. This is going to spit out prime numbers just like we did in basic. All right, we don't need to change anything, so we'll quit. To start the Fortran compiler, it's F80. Now, um, Microsoft does not use the naming conventions of the leading and signs and asterisks and things like that. So they ignore all that. So when you type things into the Microsoft programs, if you want the and sign or if you want the asterisk, you have to explicitly state it. All right, so what we're going to do, and this is a command prompt now from Fortran, is you tell it what file you want to create. I want to find a, create a file called prime. And then you say, what does it come from? It comes from the source file, which is and prime. So again, I have to explicitly say there's that and sign as part of the file name because it's not going to just assume it. And what I'm creating is a file called prime. And interestingly, the concept of extensions was starting here at this point. It's going to add REL for relocatable to the end of that. We'll see that in a minute. All right, that's it. It's already compiled. Now, there's no way to exit the Fortran <laughs> compiler. The only way to exit it is with our Control-C to get control back into the DOS command prompt or to reset the computer from the front panel. Kind of odd. Alright, so if we look at this now, what you'll see is that we have a prime rel out here somewhere. I have to kind of imagine a dot between the two of those like we're used to in the modern world. So the longest character file name in Altair DOS for Fortran is five characters like prime and it stick rel at the end. Right, so that's a relocatable file. It's not going to be asterisk prime because, again, Microsoft knows nothing about that. All right, so now we can run the linker. And in the linker, you just type in the name of the object file. In this case, prime or prime rel, either one will work. And that loads that into memory. Okay, so that's just telling us all the entry points of some of the global variables and some of the exported symbols that were in that. 
and that's the only object file we have to load, but now we need to tell it to link it with the Fortran library. All right, to do that, we give it a command that says link and exit. So what this is going to do is search the whole Fortran library to solve any unresolved references, load that into memory, and then exit. All right, now this takes a good long time. This takes a good 30 or 40 seconds. Now, while this is running, a couple of things. Um, well, here, we'll watch the lights over here because that's more entertaining. A couple of things. This linker, you could do the um, command to force it to stay in the linker when it was all done resolving all the external references to the Fortran library. And then you could run the program directly in memory, just like we did with the Altair linker. In other words, we don't have to exit. Uh, but in this case, what we're going to do with just one command is do the link with the library and exit so it's just sitting in memory. So we can turn around and save it into a file name. Okay, so that's all done. And you can see we're back into the monitor. So this linked with the Fortran library, loaded all this as ready to run in memory right now, and then went back to the DOS prompt. So now we have to save it. So, whoops, it's SAV, and we'll call it prime onto disk zero. What is the low address? Well, fortunately, the linker gave us a bunch of good information up here. The lowest address is the start of data, which is at 17100. The highest address is that number right there, so 34654. And the entry address is that number right there. Kind of confusing. But that's how computing was in those days. So at this point, the linker took our program, made it, this command made it link with the Fortran library into memory and exit. We took the image that's in memory, we've written it to a file called prime. Now the save command is not Microsoft, that's Altair DOS, so it put the pound sign in front of it. So let's take a look at that. And you'll see a pound sign prime right there. All right, so now we can just run it by typing prime. All right, so this is the exact same program that we saw running up on BASIC. Tried to make it the same line for line. Curious about performance? It's about twice as fast. So to go through the first 200 takes about uh, 80 seconds in BASIC. It takes about 40 seconds here in Fortran. Now you might think, man, I wish it, it seemed like it had been a whole lot faster. Um, one reason it's not a whole lot faster is this program spends most of its time in the floating point number libraries, which are already assembly language for the most part. So when you're running it in BASIC, you're not spending that much time interpreting and running BASIC code. You're spending more time in these assembled libraries. Um, but it does save you the control loops that are part of the BASIC code in Fortran. Obviously, those have run quicker and given us a good in improvement in speed. But other things can make a world of difference. For example, when we were talking about disk copies, a disk copy written in assembly language can get the job a whole floppy copied in about a minute whereas doing it in BASIC took 25 minutes. So a huge advantage in, in a situation like that. All right, so that was DOS. Um, we can assemble programs. We can use Fortran compilers. Uh, not much more ever happened with DOS. They came out with a version 2 that never really even got released or documented. Um, I have bits and pieces of it, but really don't know how to run some of it because there never was documentation for it. And, of course, after this, CPM came along and kind of took over the world. And uh, we'll dig into that in some of the upcoming videos. All right, the computer used for the demonstrations today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look, the feel, features, and performance of a real Altair, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This makes the computer more reliable and affordable than a vintage computer, and you don't have to worry about damaging something that is collector's quality or museum quality. So it's a great way to experience this period in history hands-on without having to worry about damaging anything. Be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.